Hi guys and welcome back to this series on how to install and configure Solar Management Hub. For more information go to www.centurionsolar.co.za Right, so in this video I quickly want to show you what we can do with the inverter settings page as well as how to configure Telegram for any messages that we might get from the system. So first of all, as you know by now, we need to log in and I'm going to do that quickly. And once logged in, I want to go to the settings tab and then I'm going to click on the inverter settings. Notice that once I do, you will see the command status at the bottom change here. So at any point in time, this uh, status bar shows us what's happening in the system. When, the, when the, we click that button, you'll also see the entire screen blanks out. This is where we ask the inverter to say, what are all the settings stored on your firmware? And then once we receive those settings, we will present those to the user to change. So I'm going to click the inverter settings. It's gonna blank out, the settings were received, and now we can start making changes to that. If the system was a multiple system, um, you can see we only have one inverter selected because this is a single system. But if they were two, this portion here would be available and you can simply select the inverter in question, number one, two, up until nine. Select the inverter and then you can make the changes that are unique to every system. It might be that one system charges from ESCOM because there is no other uh, PV panels on it and the next one charges from only solar uh, because it does have panels on it. So you can also specify the different charge rates um, for e each of those inverters. So in this system I can only charge 30 amps maximum and it was set to 20 amps. I can also change this so that let's set this one to 10 amps and you'll see that once I change that we do the same thing it blanks out waiting for, for a command and the setting was successful. Now I can also go and change the global settings. These settings would affect both or three or four or however many inverters you have in your setup. So for parallel setups, this is, this is common to all of them. For argument's sake, you can't have one system running 53.2 volts bulk charging voltage and the next one having 54 volts. Simply doesn't work. So these settings are shared across all of the inverters in the cluster. Next, I wanna show you quickly what happens when we change any setting um, so let's, I'm just going to turn off the backlight as an example. It will blank out, command sent, waiting for response. The command is successful. If we close this and we go to the logs, you will see that the installer updated the inverter and he disabled the backlight. Just before that, the installer also updated the inverter and I set the, the inverter one maximum charging current was set to 10 amps. Uh, before that though, I logged on and before that I obviously logged off. Here you can see all of the different things happening in the system. So with that in mind, we can then go, because we are in the installer, we can then also go to the user management portion at the bottom right hand side and we can create accounts for our users. You'll see that I already created an account for my client, so I'm just going to select it and select, set a new password for it. I'm just going to call it client. Okay, and this will be a user, and then I'll create the user or update the user's password and close that. Now that I'm logged in as the user, I can log off as the installer. So the installer, sim I'm simulating now the installer li leaving the, the site, and now the client wants to make changes. So the client has been given his username and password, and he can log in with his details itself. Once logged in, oops, client. Once logged in, you'll see that the client gets the same interface with a couple of changes. Number one, he doesn't have the user management portion. He can only update his own password. The next thing that the client cannot do, if you go to the faults from the first video, we said that the client cannot determine which of the, the logs, um, the, which of the settings get logged or which not. So this is some of the things that the client cannot do. However, we cannot prevent the client from physically walking up to the inverter and making changes to that. So preventing the client from making changes in the, in the software does not make sense. So, but what we can do is we can keep accountability to the, the client and then log what he does. So once the client turns the backlight on, for argument's sake, you'll see that the command is also sent, the status comes back as successful, and back in the logs, you'll see now that the client logged on and the client in updated the inverter by disabling the, the backlight. So, or enabling the backlight, sorry. So this is a very nice way for us to, to um, keep track of what's happening in the inverter at any point in time or in the system. You can also select a specific date and a specific log if you wanted to, and all of those details will be presented to you immediately. Right, so with that in mind, let's quickly see how we can configure Telegram for instant alerting. So this is done simply by opening up Telegram itself and selecting new group. So once we have a new group, we need to say who we want to add. 
the first people we want to add is the Centurion Solar Bot. Right, and once we have the bot added, we can then add another user into the system as well, or we can just keep ourselves in it. I'll click next for this for this example. We can give the group a name. So this system was called Mike's system originally. So I'll just call it Mike for argument's sake. You can also set a little icon if you want to, and then I'll create the group. Right, so with this group created, we now need to get the chat ID. So what I've done here is I've actually got the chat ID for the bot already. I'll paste it in the chat window here, and that is the bot ID number. I'll also paste this down at the bottom of the, the in the description of the video. Okay, the next thing we want to do is we want to know the chat ID of this specific group. And this is done simply by opening up the chat window, adding in raw data bot. So the one with a little envelope on it. Once we add that bot and we go back to the system, we will see that we now have a chat ID. So now because we have the, the bot that we are posting to, we can take that and we can enter it into our system. And if you go back to Telegram, we also have a chat ID. This is the one starting with a minus. Please do bear note, uh, do take note that the minus is absolutely necessary. You can go back to the system and right click and paste this. This is not a, a control V pasteable uh, um, uh, value. So you need to right click and paste this. Right. So with that set up, we can go save this and we can alert on test settings. Simply save our settings and once done, here we go. We can click on test telegram and you'll see that the message was sent successfully. And there's the message coming through. And if we go to telegram, there you can see system name Mike Solar sent a test message. So with that configured, we can now start getting messages from the system. So what I'll do quickly just to simulate is I'm going to turn off uh, the grid portion here and you'll see that we get a message in Telegram as well. So with that, here's the grid off. You'll see the watts go down to zero and in about 10 seconds time, the system will detect that the, the grid did not come back. So it's not a false positive, in which case we'll start getting a notification. The moment this thing goes red, you will see a notification pop up in Telegram as well. So there's the notification and here is the Telegram portion. So there we go. Warning Mike Solar, utility power failure. In the same sense, I can clear this over here. And in the same sense, if I were to turn the grid back on again, you will see there on, you will see that we'll detect that the grid came back on. So there's the utility power being restored and we immediately got the utility power failure as well. So this is a lovely feature for things like uh, overload or things like load shedding, where the moment you detect a power failure, you can call your wife and say, hey honey, please stop drying the, the, the um, biscuits uh, and you know slow down on, on the power consumption because we now need to extend the longevity of the batteries to ensure that we get through load shedding. This is also nice for when you're not at home and the system needs to communicate to you to tell you that there's an overload for instance and you can obviously manage it from there as well. So this is how we use Telegram and the integration with regards to determining who did what in the system. Right, in the next video, we'll be covering some of the web app portions as well as some of the, the Emon CMS stuff. And then I'll show you how we can use that to better look at the system in a more graphical interface. Thanks so much. Ciao.